Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Additional acts for Saturday in the Park have been unveiled. And there's no shortage of variety with mainstream rapper Waka Flocka Flame joining local talents like Dad. And that's our top story now at 5. On Friday, Ghost Cat and Wiz MC and others will join headliner AJR on the main stage. On the Abe stage, there will be a mix of country, rock, beatbox, and EDM. Dane Lewis will open, Face to Face will headline. Looking ahead to the Saturday event, hip-hop singer Waka Flocka Flame will headline the Abe stage. He'll be supported by Young Gravy, who's known for his often comedic rap. Local and regional acts like Dad, Mr. Bomb, and Kill OG also on that day. On the main stage, CTA will join headliner John Fogarty, as well as Trombone, Shorty, and others. It'll be the first year that Saturday in the Park will be played at the festival of the same name, and now none other than by the original band. Hi, this is Danny Serafin, co-founder and original drummer of the band Chicago. And guess what? I'm finally getting to play Saturday in the Park Festival. Can you believe it? Well, it's about time is all I can say, and I'm looking forward to it. The Free Music Festival will play out at Grandview Park. It's set for July 2nd and 3rd this year. You can find the full set list complete with times on our website right now at SiouxLandProud.com or on the KCAU 9 mobile news app. But before the music comes a parade as the summertime Mardi Gras returns to downtown Sioux City. Registration is now officially open for the 2021 parade. That is for groups and for organizations who wish to participate. Now the route will begin at the Tyson Event Center. It's set to go down Pierce Street, turn on 3rd Street, and then end on Iowa Street. The parade will kick off Thursday, July 1st at 6 in the evening. Residents of Clay County went to the polls today to have their voices heard on a number of topics, one of them being the fate of a new courthouse and jail. The $41 million bond request would be used to build new facilities. The current courthouse and jail are more than 100 years old. And the Clay County Sheriff told us the current jail is just not capable of meeting their growing capacity. If voters say no to funding a bond for a new facility, it would instead allow for renovations to old facilities, which would come at an even greater cost to taxpayers. Well, the alternative, if, if this was to fail, is I just don't believe we can continue to operate our jail. I think that we would have to close it and go the way of some other counties that don't have jails and transport our inmates to other counties. To build a new jail and to renovate the courthouse was a $55 million project. Coming up tonight at 6, KCAU 9 News reporter Jason Taktajian explains why a new courthouse and jail are so needed and what Vermillion residents have to say about getting their voices heard on the issue. Several members of South Dakota law enforcement tonight have focused in on a semi-tractor trailer rig in the southbound lane of I-29. That's near Beersford. At least four state trooper vehicles and multiple members of the South Dakota Department of Public Safety have been on the scene for most of this afternoon. Now that semi is stopped on the shoulder between mile markers 35 and 36. That's about 12 miles south of Beersford. Just a short time ago, a towing vehicle appeared to start working to move that semi. Traffic in the area had been restricted down to one lane. The Union County Sheriff's Office is leading this investigation, along with the Department of Criminal Investigation. We do have more detailed info about this on our website at SiouxLandProud.com. And of course, we will continue following this developing story. If you'd like, you can always check out our free mobile news app or, again, SiouxLandProud.com. Authorities say a man walking along a rural northeastern Nebraska road was killed in a hit-and-run incident. That happened around 12.30 Monday near Plainview. The Pierce County Sheriff's Office says a 57-year-old man's body was found near the intersection of Highway 20 and 535th Avenue. Investigators believe that man was walking on the north shoulder of that highway when he was hit. Officials did not immediately release the man's name and they did not announce any suspects in this case. A fire broke out at Sioux City Foundry this morning. That was reported around 8.30 a.m., taking place at 2100 7th Street. Now, the Sioux City Fire responded to that scene. They were able to put it out within 15 minutes. Crews then learned that the employees manually pulled that fire alarm just when a filtration system started on fire. So quick thinking, Captain Ryan Collins says all employees were able to evacuate safely, but firefighters still face some challenges there. The inventory that some of the businesses have inside their buildings makes it a struggle to, to get access to that fire. 
um, and also this just sheer size of the buildings themselves. Um. Staff was allowed to return inside shortly after. Part of the plant that caught on fire is now, of course, temporarily closed. Siouxland District Health has suspended publishing Woodbury County's daily COVID-19 report, again because of low case counts and low hospitalization rates. Officials there say it is due to those counts in recent weeks. If you're looking to keep up to date, though, all of the data from our county and all others is available daily through the state report. You could hear what else the department will be focusing on instead coming up tonight at 6. In national news, the Senate is expected to pass a sweeping piece of legislation today to counter China's global economic and political influence. KCAU 9's Anna Warnicke has the latest. In a break from partisan fighting, senators in both parties are working together to pass the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act. The bill will go down as one of the most important things this chamber has done in a very long time. The bill will invest more than $200 billion into American manufacturing, technology, research, and development to help America outcompete China. From critical supply chains to intellectual property to counter espionage, it touches on key issues that will help determine our strategic footing. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says the bill isn't perfect, but countering China on the world stage is necessary. An imperfect approach to an extremely consequential challenge. The bill has been in the works for months. It provides $50 billion in semiconductor manufacturing, invests in research and development, and focuses on enhancing the U.S. economy. Massachusetts Democrat Elizabeth Warren says winning the global race starts here at home. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says President Biden supports the bill as just a first step. The down payment on the president's proposed investment in R&D to make us more competitive. Once the bill passes the Senate, it then heads to the House, where it is also expected to pass. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke, KCAU 9 News. And it's time now for a first check on the weather. Another headline all week, really. I'm sorry, it's a snorecast for you, <laughs> Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. But for our summer-loving uh, viewers, they are happy with this forecast. Yeah, some good weather to get outside, enjoy some of those summertime activities, fishing, golfing, stuff like that. Just important to stay hydrated and take some breaks in the shade. Apply that sunscreen. Looking at the high temperatures around Siouxland today, 80s and 90s over the area. 90 degrees, Denison, Audubon, 90 degrees this afternoon in Sioux City, 92 in Wayne. We're no stranger to heat like this. The first eight days of the month of June have all been above average, and it looks like this streak will continue for some time. Lows tonight in the 60s. We'll talk about when we start to get a break from the heat and drag in some shower and thunderstorm chances. That's coming up in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. Thanks, Scott. Well, a whole lot of Americans tonight think this is not a good time to buy a home. A new survey from financing giant Fannie Mae says a record low 35% of consumers say it's a good time to buy. Worries about limited supply and surging prices outweighing improving confidence about jobs and also income. Regardless, in and around the Sioux Falls area, there is no shortage of movers. And during that transition between homes, people might turn to professional moving companies to get their belongings to their new location. For some local companies, that means they are extra busy right now. And that is the case for two men in a truck. General Manager Angela Drake says if you want to schedule a move, it's better to do it sooner rather than later. Summers are always busy. This year is blowing up extremely busy. Um, and we are so blessed by our community that they are choosing us over and over um, for us and trusting us to take care of them in this busy season. She adds that right now their schedule is booking about three weeks out. Additionally, they're running about five trucks a day plus rentals. Busy time. Well, the key word for Apple as it kicks off its latest worldwide developers conference is privacy. Among the features announced new, allowing users to block marketers from seeing if an email was opened and hiding IP addresses. That's to block tracking through Safari web browser. Users will also be able to see increased app transparency. That includes reports detailing which apps access their location, their photos, cameras, contacts, and other data. Any company that relies on uh, tracking individuals or being able to figure out who you are and what you do to serve you advertisement will be very challenged due to these uh, new privacy restrictions. 
Apple did not officially announce when iOS 15 will be available, but the company traditionally releases free updates to all compatible iPhones in the month of September. Well, it could mean a breakthrough for people with Alzheimer's disease. The FDA tonight has approved a new drug to treat it, but there is debate as to whether or not it really works. We'll explain coming up. And it looks like we're going to streak together a few more hot days in Siouxland. High temperatures back in the 90s, but a thunderstorm chance develops on Friday, and that's going to pave the way into a slight cool down. We'll have more information right after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Some showers and storms mainly in the morning. It'll also trim out some of the humidity, at least for the first half of the weekend, but it's right back into the 90s on Sunday. And it looks like we'll stay put in the 90s through much of the coming week. So with that being said, you want to make like Clyde here in Lake Park, Iowa. He was enjoying his time in the pool. Thanks to Jan for passing along that picture. And if you have a picture that you want to share with everybody, make sure to go to SiouxLandProud.com. Find the weather tab, roll the mouse down to send us your photos, and we'll try to share them right here on KCAU 9 News. Super cute. Yeah, that dog's got the right idea. Thank you, Scott. That's the place to be. <laughs> well, it's taking old backboards and giving them a new purpose in life. We'll explain the vision behind hoop dreams and poetry coming up in just a few minutes, but first, medical experts tonight are debating whether or not the newest drug to treat Alzheimer's really works. We'll explain why next. Stay with us. The FDA has approved the use of a new drug for Alzheimer's disease. This approval, though, comes despite debate in the medical community about its overall effectiveness. Dan Gray reports. The Food and Drug Administration has given the okay to use the experimental drug aducanumab made by drug maker Biogen. Well, it's, it's very exciting because this is the first new drug we've had for Alzheimer's disease in the last 18 years. Neurologist Dr. Joy Snyder directed the clinical trial at the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. She says the drug attacks the underlying brain changes that cause Alzheimer's instead of just addressing symptoms. In Alzheimer's disease, abnormal proteins, chemicals accumulate in the brain, uh, and one of these chemicals is called beta amyloid, and this drug can remove the beta amyloid from the brain. And the question is, if you do that, does that improve memory and thinking or stop memory and thinking getting worse? So that's, that's what we still need to find out. But the FDA did give its approval for the drug to be used in patients in the early stages of Alzheimer's who have mild symptoms, even though an FDA advisory committee last year said there's not enough evidence to support the effectiveness of the treatment. It may be months before the monthly intravenous drug is available. The really good news here is this is just the first drug among many that are, that are coming through the pipeline. So I think hopefully what this means is that in the next year or five years, We'll have many more drugs, and some of them alone or maybe in combination with each other will really help us stop this disease. The FDA granted approval on the condition that the drug manufacturer Biogen conduct more clinical trials. Well, she's turning something old into something beautiful, one backboard at a time. It's called Hoops, Dreams, and Poetry, and we'll explain the mission next. An old artist is giving old backboards new life, and it's a project that she calls Hoop Dreams and Poetry. Bill Wood tonight explains the story behind this inspiration. In a pure power play, a slow motion takedown on basketball courts across New Orleans, old backboards got removed, replaced, and trucked out. Worn out, well-loved, now waiting for the next coach to bring them back for a new kind of game. As an artist, what went through your creative mind when you found out that your next canvas was gonna be an old basketball backboard? I was thinking, how can I preserve the goal while creating something new on the goal? And that's been the dream this entire time. Monique Lorden scores with a slam dunk as the New Orleans artist who turned a backboard into a masterpiece. With spray paint and the rest of the right stuff, Monique wins the game and the contest with the most votes from fans who say she is the champion. You got game with your creation you call Hoop Dreams and Poetry. 
Yeah, you know, as a kid, I used to play basketball. I like to think that I could like still shoot today. This particular goal tells a story. It tells a story about then when I was on the court and now me wanting to contribute to the city of New Orleans, me wanting to see rebirth and revitalization happen and work with my community. Set up inside the Smoothie King Center is an art gallery of old basketball boards on the rebound up for one more shot from the free throw line. And the most valuable player this time is the painter, who's a poet, with her hoop dream now coming true. She shoots, she scores. Taking a live look outside right now in warm and sunny Orange City, Scott returns with one more check on your forecast just after the break, stay with us. For wrapping up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon, Sophie. And an update for viewers on an item that you mentioned earlier in this newscast involving a large police presence on Interstate 29 southbound uh, near Beersford, South Dakota. Here's the scene from earlier this afternoon as members of the State Patrol and Public Safety in South Dakota on the scene near mile markers 35 and 36 for more than four hours this afternoon investigating a semi pulled to the side on the shoulder of the interstate. We're now told that that semi has been removed from the interstate. One tow truck taking the cab portion away with another tow rig pulling the trailer away. Now, we still haven't been told what was in that trailer or why police were investigating it, but we do know that traffic on I-29 was slowed to one lane for several hours this afternoon. We hope to have more information coming up tonight at 6. Also, after World News tonight, voters in Clay County, South Dakota are going to the polls today. They're deciding the fate of a $41 million bond issue tied to construction of a new courthouse and jail. An update on that as well coming up all at 6 o'clock when I'll join you. All right, we'll see you then, Tim. And, of course, uh, we do have highlights coming up, too, because there's state soccer finals, so Jake will have those. A hot day to be playing soccer, Scott. Definitely, yeah, very hot out there today, and it looks like that will continue for a while. A cold front coming on Friday morning looks to bring some showers and storms and a little cooler temperatures for the weekend. All right, good news there. Thanks a lot, Scott. Thank you for joining us. See you at 6. Good night.